One of the most popular setups when creating particle trails is using a curl noise. So popular so that Houdini even had it set as their splash screen when starting up Houdini, I believe it was 18.5. So I figured we would take a look at how we can go about creating this type of an effect. So let's go ahead and drop in a geometry node. And we're just gonna use a sphere as our emission geo. We'll set this to polygon, just up the frequency. And then in here, we'll go ahead and create our pop net. So we'll dive in there and I don't wanna see these guides to start off with. So let's go ahead and select our input here and just disable those guides. I'm also gonna come into the birth rate and I'm just gonna up this to like 10,000. Just give us a few more points. So from here, we can do a bunch of things, but I'm just gonna create a pop vop, and this is what we're gonna be using to create our noise. So this is just one way to do this type of effect. There are plenty of other ways, but this is super simple and quick to do. So let's go ahead and drop in an add node inside our pop vop. We're gonna need to take our position, our point position, and wire that into our add. I'm also gonna drop in a curl noise and we'll wire our position into the position of the curl noise and add our output of that to our current position and pipe that into our position output. So right away, we have something going on here. So our points have changed position and it's pretty extreme. If I click play, you see just kind of our points flying all over the place. I'm actually gonna change our background to be a dark background and just disable our grid here. So obviously, don't want that. So let's go ahead and change the amplitude of our curl noise here. Something like super small. So a value of like 0.03 should kind of do the trick. So we'll hit play here and you see that we have our points going along and it's got this type of a, a curl effect going to it. Pretty nice. Now there are some limitations to this. So if I go ahead and set this to original Perlin and I click play. You see, we get this same type of effect going, but if I rotate around, you see that it's kind of almost like a 2D shape, which you may not want depending on your type of scene that you're going for. So just be careful, a couple of these noise, so original Perlin, sparse convolution, alligator, those, all three of these will have that same type of an effect. I believe all of the other ones should have this 3D shape to them. So let's go ahead and just set this back to, we'll do original Perlin and maybe I'll change the offset a little bit. Just give us something random going on. We'll click play, see what this gives us. So it's kind of difficult to kind of see what's going on. So let's go ahead and add in our trails. So we'll do a trail node and let's up the trail length to 10. Also gonna add in the add node. And let's go to polygons, go by group, go to by attribute, and we'll set this to ID. That just uses the ID that our trails have uh, from the pop network and creates the trails based off of that. So now you can see, if I go ahead and restart, you see we have our trails just kind of flowing along and we got this nice kind of a curl noise effect going on. And again, it's still a little bit difficult to see what's going on. You just kind of have to play with it a little bit here, but it's a little bit easier to see kind of how it's going to look if we go ahead and set up our render. So we'll go to Redshift. We'll just create a light dome. I'm gonna go in there, just turn off the background. And I also need a camera. And then we also need a material for our our particle trails here. So let's go into our material context, do RS Builder. I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to the standard material. So that's new in Redshift as of right now. And I'm gonna up the roughness here and that should be fine. Let's go ahead and go back to our particles and set that up. So we'll point to our material. We're also gonna go into Redshift Object go over to strands. We'll render them as strands and we're gonna change them to a capsule. That should work. And I'm gonna change the size down pretty low to like 0.2. 
And once I load up our render view here, it's gonna take a second to load everything in, but once we have this all loaded in, you're gonna see our strands and kind of what our curl noise type effect is going to be looking like. And that looks pretty decent. Let's go ahead, I'm just gonna resize this a little bit. See the curl noise looks pretty solid, but if we rotate around you see obviously it doesn't look too great. You can zoom in and stuff as you see fit, get some cool different looks to it. This is the type of angle that the Houdini 9 or Houdini 18.5 um, splash screen head obviously it would let this run a little bit more kind of layer it up some more but this is kind of the basis to the effect and you can do some different things with the trails as well and color them different ways if you're interested in learning how to go about using the age of the particles to automatically determine the colors then I do have a video on that so make sure you check that out that is through Redshift as well so that is kind of the basics of this curl noise effect. I did want to point one other thing out as well. I'm going to go ahead and just reset our sim here. We dive into our pop net, go to our pop top, and in our curl noise here, if we affect this surface effect radius, if I set this down to something like zero, you can see that it kind of turns off the curl noise. But if we set it to something like 10, it's going to just have a different effect on our particles just kind of pulls them all towards the center, makes it a little bit difficult, a little bit more difficult for them to travel away from the actual object. And you can get some weird, interesting results from this as well. Go ahead and restart our, our render view and see what this looks like. You can see that it gives you some weird kind of condensed results, but it may be what you're looking for. Maybe it's not. But just play around with your different settings and see what you can come up with. I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel that deal with Houdini. So if you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. Also have a bunch of stuff on Redshift. So if you want to learn about Houdini or Redshift in general, make sure to check out any of those videos. I do have some stuff on Sima 40, Clarice, and Octane as well. So if you're interested in any of that, check those out. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.